Hi. Welcome to chapter two. Like I said, this uh, we're going to go pretty quick in this class, hopefully. Um, hopefully your development environment is set up. You've had a chance to test it. You actually submitted some stuff for chapter one. Uh, so let's talk about this. How do I actually start coding uh, a PHP application? So we'll start trying to get you coding relatively quickly. Uh, so in this chapter, we're going to talk about uh, specifications of PHP and some of the skills are required. Some of the skills are, you know, how do I create variables? Uh, how do I use literal? How do you use some built-in functions? How do I echo data back to the screen? How do I uh, code both string and numeric expressions? Uh, some of the use some of the built-in functions, compound assignments. So there's a lot of new things that we're going to hit with you really quick, but we want to get at you everything not everything, but a, a, a good percentage of information to start having you actually write valid code as quick as possible. So these first five or six chapters are going to you know, give you a lot of information, and then we'll go a little bit deeper as the rest of the uh, semester rolls on. So again, different functions and stuff we're going to talk about, uh, how to use, get the online application, you know, development. Uh, so th this way you'll have some knowledge as far as how do I embed PHP and HTML, how to distinguish uh, PHP and non-PHP codes, describe the different data types, variable names. Uh, so there are some knowledge things that will hopefully get out of this, uh, get you started. So let's get past all this now. Now if I've got a PHP file that includes HTML or, in this case, and embedded PHP. So if you see this bracket, greater than less than sign, dollar sign PHP, this setup here says everything inside this is PHP code. You see it both in the front of an HTML code or embedded inside a PHP code, which says I'm, I'm just going to echo the you know, the, whatever the first name is. So I'm going to go out and get the first name. So I'm going to prompt the user, ask for the first name and last name. And this is telling me I'm going to get it. And it's going to echo it back out. So, so here's an example. Uh, hope a local host, a list of the path to the file that your program is running. And here's your input parameters, your list name, first name, last name, and you got a little bit of separation to carry, you know, to distinguish between the two. And here you are. You so it's all I did was say what I'm going to, because you go back here, what we're going to say, I'm going to echo first name, echo last name. So the PHP code saying, hey, assign, you know, go out and get the first name, which would have been go get the first name, go get the second, the last name, and then I'm going to echo. And I'm assigning that. So this is my assignment parameter. I'm going to assign what the underscore get function is. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. And what the get function is, the last name, store those there. And then I'm echoing it out. Now, as you can see, here I've got a bracket. And I've got a PHP. And I've got multiple lines. Slash, slash is a comment. But here I've embedded that's the echoing statement. So printing it out to display. The first name and the last name and just an example of what it would look like now PHP has a couple of different ways you can do comments there are block comments and it's pretty much anything that starts with a dollar slash dollars you know uh, asterisk and ends in a asterisk slash so anything inside that is a block comment you can have single line comments in two different fashions. One, you can put the slash slash and it says anything after that is a comment, at least until new line is received, or the pound sign. Both of those are two different ways of doing it, single line statements. Now the purpose of comments is what? To document your code so it's easy to understand. Uh, so here it's saying, hey, I'm going to get data from the what? I'm going to get data from the list. So I'm going to do a dollar sign get under some get. Now, for those of you who had Java or uh, C++, that tells you what get. It must be an array because this tells me there's an element in an array. 
get that item out, you know, get the item that's in that location, store it there. Now, some of the major rules with C++, with C++ with PHP, sorry, is every statement ends in a semicolon, and PHP ignores extra white state to make it easier to read and understand. Uh, so uh, just knowing that those two are some of the syntax rules you're going to be familiar with. Now, there are six different data types, integer, double, boolean, string, array, objects, uh, similar to other programming languages that you've encountered. Uh, some examples of what whole numbers, uh, double values, otherwise with decimal points, both positive and negative. Boolean, basically what? True, false, on, off, zero, one. And string values. And strings, you got single quotes and double quotes. If, if you want a null array or an empty string, you can have two single quotes side by side with nothing in between. Or you can use the keyword uh, null. Now, string values, I can use either single or double. Single is preferred uh, because if you use double, then PHP has got to go out and uh, investigate if there's anything else that you that you want to do in this command. You can also use scientific notation, uh, similar to other programming locations. Now, assigning variables, you use the assignment operator. All it is is a straight equal sign. So what am I doing? I'm assigning to the variable count and just let you know anything that starts with a dollar sign that is a variable and we'll talk about that a little bit later so I'm assigning the number 10 into value count here I'm assigning a double uh, a literal string you can see it either double or single quotes uh, boolean true false and then also showing you here I can assign uh, variables you know use a variable and assign a variable so there are other ways of doing that so just keep that in mind now keep in mind as far as when you're creating variable names they're case sensitive they can contain letters numbers underscore no special characters um, variable names can't begin with a digit or two underscores um, so uh, variable names can't use names that are reserved uh, so if there's some reserved words, you just got to keep those out of your variable names. And those uh, those reserved words are ones you normally wouldn't create as a name. Now, sometimes you got to define a constant yeah, that doesn't change. Uh, nothing in the program can change it. Nothing the user can change. They're hard coded into this. In this case, you got to use the define function, define the variable name and assign the value and you can tell it's going to assume what by based on what's being assigned what the uh, type is now there's a couple of different ways of getting data uh, into a php program uh, if an html form uses the get request so here i'm doing uh, the method get then I'm going to assign, you know, assign names to these, what the names are, and the way they're going to be passed to the pro, to the PHP program is it's got to be on the URL. And you saw that in the previous example. So what is what am I doing here? I'm doing question marks. And here, question mark tells me the start of my input. So first name is going to be assigned Ray. I'm going to separate because since I'm asking for two different variables. Uh, to be populated or to retrieve. I'm going to separate the two with an ampersand sign and I'm going to use uh, last name Harris. Uh, now what happens is because I'm using the get method I'm storing these parameters that are being passed to the P display PHP into an underscore get array and it's going to be first name and last name you know based on that's how they were defined so those are the variables storing it in there and if I wanted to read that array this is how you would go ahead and do that now I can also do that with the P with the HTML a tag in this case you see a reference the program again the dollar sign and the two variables so you could do it either way either with the a tag 
or the form tag. Either one gets you, uh, lets you call that get routine. Now, there is also a method called post, an HTML post request. So again, you're going to change that form. You're going to change the method from get to post. But in this case, the code is, is stored in the underscore post array, not the get array. So the question is, when would I use the get? Well, I would use the get when the request is for a page that gets data from a database server or when the request is executed multiple times that it won't cause any problems. So those are the two cases that you'd use the get. When would I use the post? Well, I'd use the post when uh, the request for a page that writes data to a database server or when executing multiple times may cause problems. So if you're going to write multiple times and it, you may override data, you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that that's the time when you would say, when would I use a post? I, that I may cause problems. Um, I, maybe I don't want to include parameters in the URL because you saw in our example, you know, back up here, what I have to do, I had to put in my URL, I had to give them the data names. Security purposes says I probably don't want to do that. So, so I don't want to include that uh, in, or I don't want to include parameters uh, in a bookmark page. And maybe I need to transfer a whole lot more data. So you, then I would use the post command. Now, Chrome, actually, when you're actually using, uh, try to refresh a post command, some of your uh, browsers will kick out a message. Chrome will, if you try to uh, do a refresh on something using the, the post uh, function, it'll give you a message and ask if you want to continue. Now, so that's a little bit how to get data in and out. Now, let's, how do I sign uh, string expressions? Um, definitely, PHP would prefer to use a single quotes, it just makes it run a little bit faster. Um, again, I talked a little bit about how to get the null. I can use it, uh, the double quotes, no space in between, or the keyword null. Uh, it could be uppercase or lowercase. Um, if I want to put double quotes, I mean, I can get data from a variable. So in this case, if I want to if I want to get data from a variable and insert it, and this is where I, the position, because I, now I want uh, PA, the, the compiler, to then interpret, go get me the data from first name. So in this case, we, we call first name Bob. So it says, hey, I got to go get the value first name and then insert it into the character stream dollar sign name. Um, here you see getting multiple names. So this again would be where you'd want, since I just want to interpret data before I populate it, go ahead. Now, it is possible to mix single and double quotes. Uh, so in the case like O'Brien, or you want to say the word hi. So you, you can uh, intermix the two. Uh, but you got to make sure, you know, do I have enough breaking? So sometimes you want to put strings together, concatenate them. Uh, the concatenation operator does is civil join. And uh, that simple, that concatenator operation is, operator is just the period. Uh, so in case I got first name Bob, I got second name Roberts, and I want to associate those two names together. So I'm going to give name. First thing I'm going to do is assign Bob, you know, here's my text string name, but I want to also concatenate to it the value of first name. So I had to start with my character string. Here's my concatenation. My dollar sign first name. I'm going to put Bob in. The results ends up being name space colon Bob. If I wanted to have a space between uh, first name and last name. Give me the variable 
first name, concatenate it. Concatenate to what? I'm concatenated to a space. So there's this white space in between these two. And then concatenate that character string to the variable, the variable that's the data that's stored in last name. So here you got first name, space, last name. Um, you can, jo can join a number to a string. Uh, and what PHP will do is actually convert a, a number into a, a character to be able to, to conjoin those together. So I still use, here's my text to start with, my concatenation operator, and the variable name, which in this case was decimal, but it'll print out that character string that way. Now, how do I print data back out to the screen, it's basically with the echo command. So here's an example name, echo, and whatever the variable name, dollar sign name. And that's great. That'll echo back things up, but it doesn't protect us from uh, cross site scripting attacks uh, to do that. And we highly recommend that you use HTML special characters function. Uh, and, and all you do is that is I'm, I'm echoing. So I'm passing that name instead of just echoing the name itself. I'm stripping off, making sure I've protected myself a little bit. So we'd highly recommend you do the HTML special characters uh, function. So calling PHP echo and just taking your variable name, passing it through special characters, and then you've kind of isolated uh, from any cross-site scripting attacks that may be out there. Now, some common arithmetic operators, you've seen it in every single program, language, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, uh, percentages. Uh, so now here it's, it's an increment, add one to a counter, decrement the counter. Uh, so just knowing that, that those scenes should be serially consistent. Now, some numeric expression. I start with X and Y, make those assignments. Here's my assignment variable. I'm going to store those in a variable called result. If I add them together, you get 22, subtract them 6, so on and so forth. So just keep in mind. Now, PHP 7 and later allows you to an, an integer divide function or integer division function uh, to be able to take X and Y. And basically, it's how many times can I divide one into the other, in this case, one time. So just some common arithmetic functions. Um, here's some statements that would help you, you know, calculate a discount. You know, list price discount percentage. Again, I got my list types time, my discount percentage, and then just make sure I move my decimal place to the appropriate place. Uh, or the discount price would be list price minus whatever that discount amount was that you just calculated. So this would give you a sample of how to go about cal doing a calculation. Now, as with any math or any other programming language, there is a sequence with, with which commands will be operated or operators will be functioned. So it's going to start with the plus plus moving left to right. They're all left to right. So plus plus minus minus then multiplication, division, and modular and then plus and minus. So uh, now granted parentheses can force uh, what gets done first. So in this case, normally the multiplication would be done first and then the addition. So it would be four times five plus three is 23. But by adding the parentheses, I'm gonna add those two first and then do the multiplication to get you to 35. So just keep in mind, order print precedence and the use of parentheses to make sure you get what you want in the calculation. Now, there are some cases where you want to do compound assignments. Compound assignments is where I'm adding things, doing things uh, to the same variable and assign it in, in that same variable. Uh, so here I'm doing concatenation, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and modular. Uh, so just knowing I'm doing the same thing. So in this case, um, yeah, that's a, I won't give any examples on that, I guess. I guess there is. Yeah, here's this compound assignment variable uh, where I'm concatenating. Uh, first, I start array. You know, here's the standard way, right? Sign name, print name, concatenate the text Harris. In this case, I've got the same name, Ray, but now I'm using the compound assignment operator, 
the concatenation with equals. So I'm basically taking whatever the value was in prior, prior and it was assigned to Ray, and then I'm concatenating Harris. So I end up getting the two ways of doing this. Um, to make code readable, I prefer the first because then it's very specific. Um, the more we start getting trickier, I mean, I know it's fewer characters to type, um, but now I've got to rely on the knowledge of the person that's going to maintain the code you're developing. A um, couple of different ways of incrementing a counter. Uh, the standard value, you know, set it to one, add one to it. But here I can do it with plus equals compound or the increment operator. All three of these will work. One's very apparent. The other two takes uh, an up, you know, a little bit more knowledge of PHP code. Um, so readability becomes your issue. Uh, a few more examples here. How to work with it. Uh, both text and numeric. Um, now there's some cases where I want to format my numbers. So if I do just send a text string, oops, here it is, one, two, three, four, five, to number format, you get a just putting the commas in the appropriate place. If I put a second variable to this function, now it says how many decimals. So I've got the number itself and how many variables it's going to be. In this case, you know, I'm going to go out two. It's going to add two. What did it do here? I truncated. And what did it do? It rounded down because it was less than five. It was five or greater, it rounded up. So pay attention to which way your rounding is going based on which way, because all it all it is is say how many decimals am I going to? And if I got multiple data, it's going to round for you. Now, date function, fairly straightforward. Date, and then you tell it which format. Um, you've got a four-digit year, uh, two-digit year, you know, it's specified, separated by dashes or slashes. Uh, so just keep in mind. Uh, now there are some functions that help you verify variable values. Um, one is, is is set empty and is numeric. Uh, is set is going to say it's going to be true if the value has been set and it's and it's basically it's not null. Empty says hey I'm going to return true if that variable is empty and then uh, the is numeric just says, yeah, I'm going to return true if it's a number. So those are ways of doing verification of variable input, uh, which could be beneficial. Now, we saw this HTML special character string, and basically all it converts is HTML special characters uh, to their corresponding HTML entries and returns the resulting string. So it just, just cleans up making sure that we hide uh, anything that prevents other problems, uh, somebody cracking into our code. Uh, HTML ent ent entities, uh, it basically just says, I'm going to take all the characters and, and, and just return that string. But I'm going to do it to the HTML entities that's going through. Now, there is an input filter, a filter input command that... Uh, gets value from a super global variable and optionally filters it. Um, now, the types of arguments you could have, and basically say, here's, you know, here's my super global parameter, what the variable name is, uh, and what the filter. Now, granted, it's optional, but it basically returns the requested value of success and fault if it, if the filter fails, or a null if the requested value is not set. Um, now the type can be the super variable. Now in this case, input get, input post, input cookie. Those are all global special variables that are used. So now it says I can say on a get and an input get, check the variable name that I'm supposed to retrieve and then decide if, you know, is it, you know, what am I checking it for? Now here's some potential uh, constants that you can use. Uh, filter validate 
integer floating, if it's an email address, is a URL, is it Boolean? Uh, returns a value true if it's a one true on or yes, otherwise it returns false. Uh, so these are common filters that you can put in here to say, you know, what do you want to check for? Um, now, <laughs> statements that retrieve values uh, from super, well, you know, here I got my, I'm going to assign a product description, I'm going to filter the input, I'm going to, that's my super global variable I'm checking. I'm checking for product description and I'm just basically returning null in the get it, you know, if it's product description hasn't been set, it's going to fail. Now, in this case, I'm putting that filter on it. So I got input post looking for the same investment. And now I'm just saying, is it a valid float or not? And here it says, is it a valid integer? So, just ways you can use that filter input and some of the global parameters. Uh, so here's an example of the product discount calculator, what the results would be. Now here you got what? I've got the method post. So I'm using a form. I'm using method post. I'm defining what's going to get prompted and what kind of discount percentage. And then I'm going to change the buttons and calculate output. So, so what I got, you had here, you had the three different values you're entering and a calculate discount button. And then here's the PHP. Now, what am I doing? Since it's a post, so here I'm filtering my input. I'm, so I'm checking for the post. I'm looking for product description. Here I'm checking the input. Is it a, is it a valid number? Here's, I'm checking it again. Is it a discount? So I'm filtering the input coming through. I'm doing the calculation like we saw before on how to create a discount. And now for formatting purposes, I want to make sure that it actually comes out what in, in, you know, dollars and cents format. So what am I doing? I got a dollar sign. I'm concatenating the format. So I'm going to change the number format to whatever list price is to two decimal places. So here you've got, you know, discount, you know, fixed discount number. So all of that is valid stuff. Now, when I want to send it back out, I want to echo and here I'm stripping off all the special characters before I echo it back out. Uh, and you see, we try to use that special characters all the way through to make sure that we kind of keep that all intact. Now, different relational operators. I want to compare operations. I want to see if things are the same. So here I'm going to test if is the last name identical to Harris or the number 10. Uh, not equal, greater than, greater than or equal to, or less than, less than or equal to, greater, greater than or equal to. Uh, this one, three asterisk I want to make sure it's absolutely the same. Here you got logical operators, not, and, and, or. Uh, so if a statement has no other clauses, you can do an if statement. So there's no if. So you're doing what? I'm checking this condition. If it's true, if it's true, execute things that are in the braces. If they're, and, an else clause to it. What do I have? I got my condition. Now remember, you know, you got to make sure your brackets, your parentheses line up. Bracket that tells me enter the first name, else you can enter the second. So you got if, else. Now I can use an else if, else clause, and all of these are relatively standard to most programming languages you have been exposed to. Uh, if not, here's what I'm checking my investment. I'm calling routine. Is it checking if it's empty? It's not empty. I got, whoops, it's proven true. That says what? That's investment says it was empty. I got to kick out a message saying, hey, it's a required field. Go ahead and enter it. Uh, check if it's numeric. Did they put in a valid number? Uh, make sure that it's not, you know, it's less than zero, less than or equal. It's got to be, you know, you need to have a valid number. So, Otherwise, you're going to get a message and say, hey, it's greater than zero, it's numeric, 
and there was some value in there, that means my investment's valid. Uh, now you can do compound expressions, the or statement, here's a couple of ors. Um, you know, if months is empty or it's numeric or it's this, boom, you can enter that. So you can streamline that nested if a little bit. Um, now, PHP also has a looping function, has a couple of them. Uh, one is the while, so you set the variable, the counter to start with, and says as long as it's less than five, do everything within this bracket. And then, in this case, it prints out this message. So in this case, it's giving you a comment what message would be, one, two, three, four, five. Now, the other looping mechanism is the for condition. Now, it's made of three different parts. It's one is the initialization, what my function that I'm comparing to, what's my deciding factor, and my increment. Uh, so it basically says there's my initialization, there's my test, and here's my you know, increment. Uh, so both do the same thing. One just does it on one line versus three lines of code. The output of the code is identical. Now, here's an example of the while statement and a couple others percentage. So you got your set the variables, set the condition. It's true. Now here you've got, I'm doing what? I'm taking future value plus or minus, you know, I'm going to take future value, I'm going to multiply future and interest rate and store it back into uh, future value and then increment my counter. Uh, so it's, it's easier to write, but making sure you understand what the different variables stand for. Um, here's the for loop with the same thing. Now, if you want to pass control between different web pages, um, there are some built-in functions to help you do that. One is uh, include a, a path, so it inserts the uh, and runs the file in the path. Uh, include once, it's the same, it includes its path, but it runs it only one time. Uh, it's required, it says, hey, <laughs> Is it, it's actually checking if that file or if that thing ex file exists on that path. If it fails, it stops the script. Uh, require once does the same thing, but it only runs one time. Uh, exit uh, it exits the current PHP, and if you can give it a status, it'll actually return the status. But you can also use the die function, which then is basically the same thing as the exit command. Um, now here's some examples of the different functions. Here's your include. Um, the parentheses are option, so I'm going to include PHP, uh, you know, index.php. Um, I'm going to require that file to exist, and here's your three different options. The parentheses here are optional. Uh, so uh, here's in the current directory. Now I'm going to navigate or change different locations. I'm looking when I'm doing this test, I'm including this PAP. Is it valid, yes or no? I'm looking only in the directory I'm at, in the current directory. Now, if I want to increase or decrease uh, which directory I'm looking at, this period here says, hey, I'm looking in the current directory for this file. This says, hey, I'm going up one directory. So basically, I'm going back one directory. In this case, I'm going up or back two directories in that tree. Uh, if you've taken a Linux class, uh, you've probably been exposed to uh, some of this uh, code before. Uh, here's an example of a future value calculator, page one, page two, and then it says, hey, I've got to make sure that some of the error messages that uh, can be killed. So here's the index PHP file. So we're collecting some information up front. We're ver verifying that certain variables exist. Um, so we're making sure they're all set. Here I am then in the main body. I'm going to say, hey, I want to check if the error message, you know, so if PHP, so this is, you got one call inbedded PHP right here. 
So it's checking if it's not empty, give it a message based on what the error message from special characters was. Um, so you're checking if it's special characters. And here you're looking at investment, making sure there's no special characters, HTML. So this is a way of checking the data that you're receiving. Um, and then you go out and get the information. And then this is where you're going to calculate other error messages for. So I'm just going to skip by. You can read through all of those. I don't think there's anything new. Now, if we're looking for more specific documentation of PHP, you can go to php.net slash docs.php and it sends you to this information you can verify and check the different commands that are available and how they're used uh, so it's sometimes beneficial and maybe quicker to get through than checking through the textbook um, so the first page of the website you click on the name of the language in this case we're doing php uh, we're going to search for the command we're looking for um, so you can do that. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of information as far as uh, getting started with PHP. Uh, we'll know more once you start trying to make the modifications in the end of the chapter. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.